Hello again. This is a special video in which we will review the most important themes and events of chapters 51 through 53 of the second part of Don Quixote de la Mancha. So let's review. The novel's epistolary turn draws our attention through a sequence of frames and perspectives that are as complex as ever. Back and forth we go between the Duke and Duchess's court and Sancho's. We see the importance of humility in politics, but we also see how the law itself is a kind of riddle, a kind of paradox that seeks to regulate human action, sometimes so much so that it risks provoking inaction. These chapters also provide a close look at the social dynamism of early modern Spain. The lower castes are mobile. The nobility is in decline. Don Quixote is at the center of it all, trapped between Doña Rodriguez and the Duke and Duchess. Finally, what are we to make of the invasion of Sancho's island? Like Don Quixote's earlier allusion to Clavileño as a Trojan horse, the invasion of Barataria likely refers to the Morisco problem. Sancho can't handle the violent truth of politics and resigns himself to obscurity. His strange metaphor combines the ant of Rojas' prologue to La Celestina with Apuleius' ass in The Golden Ass. Let the wings of the ant stay in the stable. All Sancho wants is some normal shoes which adds irony to his stupid law fixing the price of shoes. It's a tragic end to Sancho's dream of ruling over a happy republic. The only solution is the Cincinnatus myth, return to the farm. Two final points. In another nod to the moral of Apuleius' novel, Sancho humanizes his ass more than anywhere else in the novel. And two, Cidiamete Berengeli's interventions are growing as he provides major commentary in chapters 48, 50, 52, 53, and 54. As we shall see, Cervantes' treatment of the Morisco question is now reaching a climax. That's all for our review of chapters 51 through 53 of the second part of the novel. Keep reading. The story only gets better in the coming chapters.